Getting fat is like being in debt. Before we begin, just have a look at that tricep vein. Okay, let's begin. <laughs> Promise. I'll teach you an interesting analogy that'll probably make it easier for you to stay in shape. And also, it'll be something that you can teach to other people. So if you've wanted to help your family or your friends uh, lose fat, then this is a good analogy that you can teach them as well. Why should you listen to me? Well, I've been in the fitness lifestyle for about 10 years, maybe about nine years now. And I've made lots of mistakes. I've made pretty good progress. I think I've gotten way fucking bigger. Look at that. This is natural as well. This is about nine years of, of uh, training. Um, made lots of mistakes. I didn't have good genetics or fast results. I, I literally made like nine years of progress in probably about, uh, I don't know, you could have probably done this in about five years if you didn't fuck up like I did. So I'd like to teach you some of the mistakes and uh, this analogy that we're covering today will help you. First of all, my name is Hamza. My current mission is to educate 10 million men. We'd, we've done about 3 million like total follower count. So when that hits 10 million, then I'll deem this as ch checked. I'm basically learning out loud as I go along my own journey. You can use what's helpful and let go of the rest. So then subscribe if you want to get these educational guides on your homepage instead of the clickbait entertainment videos, which don't actually help you, but you just watch them to like pretend to be productive. And uh, if I've already changed your life, then just go leave a comment below with your story of, you know, you got onto self-improvement, you watched some of my videos, what happened, what's your life like now, because you'll be inspiring other guys as well. And finally, top link in the description, get my free email list, get emails like this, sent to your inbox every single day where you can learn about like how to speak to girls, how to become more attractive, all that stuff. Top link in the description, go there right now. And let's begin with the three parts of this video, which is the analogy, how to use it for yourself, and then how to use it to help others. We're going to begin with step number one, the analogy, which is shout out to John, the coach I just spoke to yesterday inside of the gym. He told me this. So basically, this guy comes up to me yesterday. We, me and him have spoke like a bunch of times in the gym. And we have like a pretty long, quite deep conversation about helping other people to uh, lose weight to make progress in life. And he ends up saying this. He says, being fat is like being in debt. And we start like in a snowballing with that. We start like talking about, oh, shit, that's such like a good analogy. Because... When you become fat or when you get into debt, basically you've went over your budget because of excess, excess calories or excess spending. You've went over the thing that you should have. That means that you took what you were supposed to have today for your current self and then you stole from your future self. Fat people are thieves. They've stole from their future selves. People in debt are thieves. They've stole from their future self. Think about it. This is like, if you're fat or you're in debt, that meant that you didn't have enough of calories or, or money left today. And then instead you took some from tomorrow and some more and some more and some more. And it's no wonder why these people, quite frankly, they're quite miserable because of course they are. Wouldn't you be miserable if younger you took your calories? Think about that. How, how fucking interesting is that? Wouldn't you be miserable if younger you took your calories? Wouldn't you be miserable if younger you took your money? He spent money on a credit card thinking about you today, thinking, yeah, this fucker will go pay for it. Not me. This guy in the future will pay for it. No one wonder these people are fucking miserable i'd be miserable if i if i realized my younger self was a fucking asshole so one tip i just want to give you right now is what is your future self thinking about you right now whether you're fat or you're fit or you're in debt or you're financially secure what is your future self thinking about you right now is he looking at you thinking what a fucking asshole or is he looking at you like oh fuck thank you so much like, what if you ate the right amount of calories and you trained today? What if you go to the gym and you do a bunch of bicep curls? Because that doesn't make your biceps bigger. It makes your future self's bicep bigger. I'm me right now, and yet I didn't make this physique. My younger self made it and gave it as a gift to me. So no wonder I seem so arrogant because I'm one of the few people in the world who actually has a lot of self-respect and self-love. Because look at what my younger self did for me. He went to the gym a thousand times, tore the muscle till it was painful, just so I could have the physique today. He made over a thousand YouTube videos so that I could have like the success today. So are you stealing from your future self 
or are you giving to your future self? It's a question to ask yourself. Maybe this is, this is a big one. Maybe you want to write this down and you want to put this up on your wall. Don't steal from your future self. Give to your future self. Once you're fat slash in debt, you have to go into a season of pure focus in eliminating it. You probably know this. If you've ever gained a bunch of weight or if you have ever been in debt, you can't just live like a normal life where you're kind of balanced and you know, you're doing everything else. It's kind of like a full-time job where you're just focused on it. That's the problem. Like when you're an, an athlete and when you've got normal finances, it doesn't really take up your entire day. You can still have like a laugh with friends. When you're fat and you really want to lose the weight or when you're in debt, you could be in the middle of a loving conversation with someone laughing as you still like, it's like, it's like the subtitles, like laughs in fat. It's like everything you do is colored in the light of your pain. Everything. People who, who really are experiencing these things will know everything they do is like, you have to add like the extra detail of like in fat, you're brushing your teeth whilst you're fat. That's how it feels like. It's like you're, you're literally, this is your life now. You have to focus on it like this. And that's fucking horrible, right? Because that means that your brain's creative power is not being used for some bigger problem, some bigger, huge like purpose, some mission, something amazing. It's being used because your future self stole it from you. Fucking asshole. You can't live like other people who live more balanced, enjoyable lives. The athlete goes out who's got a six pack and he doesn't even need to stress. I mean, some athletes do, to be honest, but like, let's say, you know, like a athlete, but who's got like a balanced lifestyle, or whatever. He goes out and he's like, he doesn't really even think about the calories or some shit. He eats what he wants. But he doesn't do that often. He's got his meal prep. He eats his like the same meals over and over again. But when he goes to the restaurants, he doesn't think about like, oh, oh I've got to keep my calories low. Because it doesn't make that much of a difference because he's already had an amazing level. Whereas the fat person doesn't get that. The, the person in debt doesn't get that. You know, people who aren't in debt, they can go out and like meet some friends and go for a coffee. That's, that's it. People who are in debt can't, they're not allowed to do that. They've got to go and fucking budget and they'll feel like dickheads if they go spend another three dollars or four pounds or some shit on a coffee. So suddenly, like, your experience of life is just nulled because everything is colored in the light of your struggle. Again, because your younger self did this to you. And if you compare that against the athlete and the financially strong, we have a great level of stillness. And I've wrote we as an important word because this is how I see myself. I was going to write they, and I was like, no, fuck that. I am the athlete. I am the financially strong. So I'm going to acknowledge that for myself. And maybe you'd want to as well, because this is powerful to like, you know, acknowledge yourself with a certain identity, which we'll talk about soon. We have a great level of stillness and low stress. I know I've got it. I know it. If an athlete overeats or if a financially person overspends, they often naturally correct course afterwards. Like they, we quite intuitively know with a lot of intelligence, if we've overate, the next day we'll end up just doing a bit more cardio without really thinking about it. The financially strong, if they buy, have like a big purchase the next few months, they'll just kind of like intuitively spend a little less because if we've taken from tomorrow, intelligent people and hardworking people realize, okay, well, I've got to go and pay that debt, that fat debt. I've got to go pay that off now. Unfortunately, people who, who don't have that kind of mindset, the fat and the people in debt, they, they don't have this. So they'll wake up tomorrow knowing that they're in debt, knowing that they went into excess and then they'll do it again and again and again. And that's where the problem comes in. So you can see that being fat is very similar to being in debt. I think it's a very good analogy. Now let's talk about how to actually use it yourself. Well, Let's first get you the, basically the kind of self image where you won't get fat in the first place. So the athlete self image, it's seeing yourself as this like athlete who's lean, who trains all the time. Like if you're going to the gym five times a week, you basically are an athlete. Maybe you haven't seen yourself like that. You see yourself as like the guy who's struggling to go to the gym. Most of my audience who are watching this are athletes, like, you know, the young guys who are training hard. 
But in cases there's any like middle aged people watching this, like so many middle aged people I speak to, they see themselves as like someone who's a worker, like a nine to five worker who goes to the gym or tries to go to the gym. Well, that's not going to fucking make you progress, is it? Don't see yourself like that. See yourself as an athlete, an athlete who works a nine to five job, but an athlete no less. You might just find yourself the next day getting your little protein shaker ready with a bit more confidence, being like, well, yeah, I'm an athlete. Of course I have a fucking protein shaker. It's what I do, right? I've got my gym bag and everything. You're like, oh yeah, I am an athlete. Who? Oh yeah. Like I almost didn't even realize that. Because when you have an updated self-image, you act in alignment to that. And so when you come home and it's time to eat and there's that little piece of shit in the kitchen again, the, the fridge, whatever it is that you keep eating on, you'll think to yourself, nope, I'm an athlete. I'm going to go have the healthier meal instead. And the same with budgeting as well. Nope, I'm financially strong. I'm not going to go and spend my money on this bullshit thing right here. I'm not going to go and use my credit card. Be reminded of your athlete identity often. So I had this identity for years and years and years, but in 2022, I almost like forgot about it for months and months and months. Basically, I got into this weird chapter of my life where I stopped going to the gym because I became so obsessed with business and like Andrew Tate kind of mindset where I was like, oh yeah, like, you know, I'll just do push-ups at home to save time. And then I didn't even do the push-ups. So basically I completely stopped going to the gym for months and months and months, but it was still part of my identity. Like I almost didn't even realize like what was happening. I ended up having a surgery when I moved to Dubai. And before that, I was always speaking to the surgeon, like for my appointments. And he'd always ask me like random questions about being an athlete and stuff because he, you know, had had asked me what I was. I said, basically, I'm like a fitness YouTuber. I'm not really a fitness YouTuber, but it was an easy way to explain. And uh, I, I basically end up having complications in the surgery. I almost die. I choke on my own blood. I'm sent to ICU. I can't breathe properly. It, it's, it's a fucking dreadful situation, honestly. And the surgeon walks in and instead of being panicky, he looks at me in disgrace and he says, what's the matter, Hamza? Why don't you just breathe? We see this with, with like fat middle-aged men who don't exercise, they, they drink, they smoke. Why don't you just breathe? He looked at me like I was a fucking idiot. And the only thing I could tell him was like, I, I, I smoked a cigar yesterday because I was trying to be like Andrew Tate. And I felt so fucking guilty. I was like, holy fuck, am I a dickhead? I'm a fucking athlete. Athletes don't smoke cigars. I don't give a fuck what some influencer does on the internet. Athletes stay healthy. They don't drink. They don't smoke. They sleep well. If they've got a surgery, they're in prime fucking health for it. This was the identity that I, like a reminder that I needed. And from that point onwards, I took my, my training way more seriously, especially in the last few months as well. I've been taking it very seriously. Now I see myself as a bodybuilder. But like I had lost that up until I needed that reminder from someone who looked at me in disgrace and was like, you're an athlete. Why are you like this? And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm an athlete. Like I forgot about it. So you need to have reminders of your athlete identity. Maybe you've got a wardrobe of the clothes that you wear. What's interesting is uh, around this time, I stopped wearing the same like athlete clothes and I started wearing more of the, you know, the sort of designer uh, fashionable shit, you know, because I was making money and I was being more materialistic when I moved to Dubai. And um, so sport meant a lot less to me. Gym meant a lot less to me. I was thinking more about money. And so I lost that. Maybe your athlete identity, you have like shaker cups, you have pills, you've got supplements, you've got energy drinks, you've got the uh, protein shakes, the gym bag, you've got the gym clothes, you, all that kind of stuff. You've got a gym playlist. Have it, have it all around you on your apps, on your phone. You've got my fitness pal. You've got like a work tracking app. You've got playlists on Spotify, which are all for different kinds of gym, um, cardio and heavy lifting and PRs. You've got gym friends. Have this like a big part of your life in the same if, if anyone here is, is uh, fairly fit, but not fine financially strong have the same thing with strong finances have friends who have got good finances not just who make a lot of money but friends who don't spend money on bullshit so that you know they're always live below their means and stuff friends who are making more money friends who are investing in their education to learn to make more money friends who are learning skills friends who are going out and like selling door to door or some shit just for fun to develop themselves you start doing that shit you start having your goals on your wall all over 10k a month 10 percent body fat Suddenly you're reminded of it all the time of like, yeah, shit, this is the person I am. And fat negativity is what we need, not, not fat positivity. We need fat negativity. This is what the, the coach I spoke to yesterday, he was like, the, the problem with fat is that with um, debt, 
everyone knows it's a bad thing. Like it, like obviously there's some kinds of debt, which is a good thing, but that's more like billionaire level. So we won't talk about that. But with debt, if, if you're in debt, your family, your friends, everyone will look at you and say, that's a bad thing. If you're in debt to calories, basically, if you're fat, people these days are now saying, oh, that's you're, you're, you're beautiful. They're like they've got their eyes closed. Like, yeah, 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 you're, yeah, you're beautiful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Don't fucking believe them. Especially if you're a guy, by the way. As a girl, you can get away with it because a lot of people will just, you know, men will lower their standards, whatever. As a guy, we don't have body positivity or any bullshit. You just are either in shape or you've got to be rich. That's it. Best case scenario, you've got both. So don't be, don't think that this like new age fat positivity movement is for men. It's only for women because men would still sleep with fat women. And even then it's like, it's not good. Even then those men are making fun of them and everything. Those, the women who talk about fat positivity are making fun of the fat girls and stuff so don't don't believe this book was it's just like this like um modern you know like public thing that this weird fake game we're all playing you can see all the fakers like this is what we're doing any instagram dickhead that you see some um fitness influencer who does the whole like hey guys this is actually what i look like oh, like you know this shit it's like they're not doing it because they agree with the message they're doing it because this is what's trendy right now so we need more fat negativity we need to look to our fellow man and say hey you're fat why are you so fat Imagine that. If you're fat right now, like what if I just looked at you in the in the eyes and said, "Why are you fat?" Imagine how much extra pressure and like 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 I'm not being extremely disrespectful. I'm not insulting you. I'm not swearing at you. But imagine if I curiously just ask you like, "Why are you fat?" Imagine putting a fat guy on the spot like that and he's like, "Oh, oh." And now he has to think for himself. Now he's like, "Oh shit, like I have fucked up." Imagine saying to a guy in debt, "Why are you in debt?" And he's like, "Oh, Oh, like, here's the list of mistakes that I made. That's how you actually help, especially men, is through criticism, but from a place of love, where it's like, you're you're asking someone, like, why are you fat? And he has to answer for himself and realize, like, he's embarrassed by his answer. That's what's going to get his ass into the gym the next day. So don't believe this um, fat positivity thing and don't spread it yourself. If you do have a friend who's who's overweight, ask him that question. Like we'll be talking about um, this soon. But maybe if you're fat as well, ask yourself that question. Why am I fat? And don't answer with like, you know, a nice soft voice. Well, because this and this and this. No, no, no. Why are you fat? Why did your younger self steal from you today and make you less attractive and less confident and less sexy and lower testosterone? Why did he do that? Answer that question. Because there might be a bit more pain and real emotions to that. Oh, because his mental health was fucked. Oh, because he never even once considered you, his future self and his decision making, which is a very, which shows, no offense, bro, but like a very stupid decision making process. Think about that for a second. Do you not see like the chink in your armor right now? Decision making is one of the most important skills you could have by far. If you want to become successful, happy, have loving relationships, you need good decision making. What's the core part of decision making? It's that things get better for your future self, long term positive results, right? If you're fat, it means you've got poor decision making. It means that you are bad at one of the most important, highest leverage skills ever. That should be something that makes you think, oh shit, I might just lock myself in a room for about two days. Pretend I'm sick from work or school and sit here and try and figure this shit out because that's going to hurt if I don't fix this soon. That's the most important skill you could possibly have is decision making. And you keep making decisions that are short term. Hmm. You might just want to focus on that. Maybe I, I'll do a guide on um, decision making because it is a very important thing. That's how you use it for yourself. Basically, just keep the analogy in mind and stop stealing from your future self. When you wake up, like one more thing I'll add on to this is when you wake up, your day should be structured for your future self, especially if you're very young, right? If you're like 60 years old, fair enough. You don't really have to think about this. I probably still would anyway. But especially if you're like fucking 20 years old, bro, younger or a little bit older, whatever, you should be doing most of your day for your future self. It's just that the things that you do should be kind of enjoyable for yourself too. So for example, I go to the gym for my future self, but I've set up the gym in a way that I enjoy it today. So it's like a win-win. Your day should not be about you indulging in the current self and making your future life worse. 
because that's how you end up having depression and self-hatred. That's how you end up having like low self-esteem. Because of course, like bro, I'd have low self-esteem if I was fat. I'd ha- I'd be pissed if I like if I looked at my younger self and I was like, he's a fucking dick. Of course, like there's people like me who have such high levels of self-love because of delayed gratification that the peasants like the, like around the world think it's like arrogance and ego. It's not. This is just what a healthy level of love looks like because my younger self worked for me. He did this for me. So of course I love myself. Of course I, I think I'm a fucking amazing person because I did this for me, my younger self. Even though those workouts were so painful, even though I I woke up and worked for 12 hours every single day for years, he did that for me. So of course I have that. So like that's what you need to use this for yourself. Wake up and do it for your future self, not for you. Don't spend hours of your day just indulging for your current self and thinking, whatever, I don't care about my future. Like that's so fucking weird and cringe. Think and do things for your future self. Set things up for him. And you just might find certain things that you're doing are actually really enjoyable for you right now. That's the sweet spot. The sweet spot is when you're thinking about making things better for your future self. So you're delaying gratification. But the actual task that you're doing is actually kind of fun for you right now. Like going to the gym is for me. Working on YouTube is for me. So I'm having fun. Like this is like, this is, it's it's tough. I won't lie to you. What I'm doing right now recording this video, it is tough. But it's also in some ways fulfilling and enjoyable for me. And it makes things better for my future self. Now, I have perfectly, I haven't just gotten lucky and found the things that I enjoy, but that are also delayed gratification. I literally experimented and I cultivated these things. So it's bodybuilding and business for me that are both things that make my future life better, but also are enjoyable right here, right now. But it might not be the same thing for you. Yours might be a completely different kind of career. Yours might be a completely different kind of training that's enjoyable now, but also makes your life better in the long run. And it's your duty to go and experiment and go and try like 15 different sports in the next few months. You won't do that. Most people who, like I've literally just said that, 99.999% of the views of this video, if you go and have a look, they won't listen to that because that's a piece of advice that requires you to stand up and go outside. And most people just won't do, take that action. That's your competition. Look at the view count of this video. 99.99% of the people of this video will, will never even go and try 10 different training styles in their life. They won't go and like sign up to a new club just to go see if it's more enjoyable than the current one that's your competition in life it's people who like won't they'll they'll list, they'll be listening to this mouth breathing and then they won't even actually take action to it this is how i was able to cultivate a very amazing life for myself I went and experimented with so many different business models so many different sports and and you know like um ways of training to now I found the ones that what firstly, most importantly, make my life better in the long run. So it's productive and it feels like, okay, my life's getting better. I'm climbing towards a big goal, but also that is very enjoyable right now. So I've got literally up the, the perfect life. So of course I feel so fucking happy. Of course I seem arrogant to the average person. Of course I seem like I'm, I'm egotistical to the average person because my life is so different to theirs. It's not because I'm genuinely so egotistical or anything like that. I'm still a student. I'm still here learning like more than the, the people who say that I'm arrogant. But it's that I've cultivated this life where I'm doing the, the hard work today, but I've made it enjoyable because I've perfectly crafted it, found the things that are enjoyable for me, that get me into a flow state, found the variables that increase the likelihood of getting into a flow state. So I hope you can copy that and use it for yourself because yours might not be bodybuilding and business. Those are mine. <clears throat> and then how to help others with it. Let's say you've got a family member like your mother or a friend you're trying to help who's kind of fat right now. Give them a fine reputation to live up to. Subtly mention to people something like, oh, you're an athlete. And so, you know, you're speaking to someone, say that. Oh, yeah, you're a really hard worker. And so just subtly mention that you're, you don't realize, by the way, you speak like this to people, like this calculated, supportive way. You will literally be changing the lives of everyone you speak to. It's such a powerful thing. If you go see some hard worker in the gym, you go see someone who's in the gym all the time or, you know, some girl who's just a beginner and you just casually mention this to her, you will literally change her future forever. And she might not like you might not even like realize it. If you see someone who's working hard, 
give them a fine reputation to live up to act like they already are an athlete so your your mother if she's been like going to the gym she aimed to go to the gym five days a week but she's actually been going like once a week pretend that she's an athlete anyway just do it just pretend that your mother is already an athlete pretend that your spouse or whoever you're trying to help is already a full-on athlete almost delude yourself into thinking that they are like that because then you'll treat them like that and then they'll be more likely to be like that Along with that, praise their hard efforts, not results or intelligence or anything genetic. Basically, when when we praise effort, the person is way more likely to continue to do the task. When we praise intelligence, genetics, or just the results itself, which is so interesting, the person is less likely. So there's been studies done on children to basically find out, okay, what kind of praise, what kind of compliment actually helps? They complimented how hard the child had worked on a task, like how much effort they put in. And then they all also complimented the child's sort of genetic traits like oh you're so intelligent so it was like you work so hard on this little timmy or you're so smart little timmy do you see how working hard was an effort thing and you're so smart is almost like this oh yeah that's just who you are you would think that that both of them was were, were a positive the kids who were told that they were smart actually had a very negative spiring spiraling feedback loop which if you when you were young if you were called gifted or smart you probably relate to this you're like oh yeah like it, it actually fucked me up in a really weird way because it made you think that you didn't need to put in effort you should always be praised and you should also always praise others on their effort their hard work their dedication like these character traits the grit the perseverance the resilience so when you go and see someone that you want to help in any area but let's say with fat loss don't say to them like oh you lost 10 pounds you're looking so good don't say that because that's like what's normal to say but that's not actually often what will help like the res- like praising someone on the result makes them very result focused and often it's not being results focused like everyone wants to lose 10 pounds being obsessed with losing 10 pounds doesn't make you special it's the person who just fucking grinds even though it's painful so you praise them on that grind praise the grind say to them like oh like you walk past the whoever's got the sweatiest shirt in the gym walk past them and literally fucking tell them that like yes bro you know like i've literally just walked past bro you've literally got the sweatiest like if you've got this kind of relationship with some guy in the gym you've got the sweatiest shirt bro you've worked the hardest today you could say if that's like you know someone who you often speak to a little bit doesn't sound weird i might not say that's like a girl i've never met oh by the way you're yeah you're really sweaty I wouldn't say that to a stranger, but like if you've got that kind of dynamic, right? Or you see someone who's training to failure, you see someone who's who's really working hard. Yes, excuse me. Yeah, give them a little fist bump. You're training really hard today. I respect that. Walk past. That's it. That's all you have to say. You've just changed her life forever. You have literally just lowered her chance of like dying from obesity, cardiac arrest, or all these weird, weird problems for the rest of her life. If you just gave that one compliment, that's all you've got to do to change someone's future forever is praise their hard work. That's it. So why are we not doing this like fucking 20 times a day? Why am I not doing this like 20 times a day? Because it's a bit awkward to speak to people because they've got their headphones. Just shut up, man. Oh, they've got, but they sometimes their headphones are like, just shut the fuck up, bro. You'd be so surprised of how well people take this and how many girls will end up fucking you when you actually praise them like this. I'm just telling you right now. So I, I won't lie to you. Often I won't do this because I'm a little bit scared of, you know, speaking to the stranger. What if people look at me? What if she, she acts like it's weird or something? But you would be surprised of how high the percentage is of when you praise someone to them becoming a good friend of yours or like it becomes a girl that you end up dating or something. So it's only basically a win-win. So the next time you're in the gym, the next time you're speaking to someone you care about who's like on their fat loss journey, their bodybuilding journey, praise the hard work. It can be casual as fuck. You can just say something like, oh, you're, you're training really hard. I love to see that. That's it. You've just changed their life forever. Along with that, we can basically use the alternative um, uh, knowledge for each one. So, for example, if there's people with bad finances who are in debt, we can teach them with the athlete mindset. We can teach them things like the daily grind, progressive overload, making it fun, consistency, training partner, deload weeks, programming. We can teach them, right? Workout routines. If you, in a weird way, you teach someone who's got bad finances a workout routine and you tell them you've got to stick to the plan, got to stick to the plan, they'll end up being more likely to fo- like set some kind of like budget and actually stick to the plan. And that'll actually help them with the finances. When you improve in one area of life, you often improve in other areas as well. And along with this, let's like, so if you've got someone who's got bad finances, like a friend or whatever, teach them 
make them relate to it with the gym because often they might even have like good gym mindset but they've not really used the same mindset over in finances and along with that if you've got fat people teach them the finance mindset so if you've got someone who's fat but usually they might be okay with money then you teach them things like oh like well you know being fat is kind of like setting a budget you've got to do this or we can make more money which is kind of like expending more calories so we make more money, we've, we've got more calories to spend, or we go and exercise more and we go and do more cardio and we expend more calories. It's the same thing. And so we teach them that and they're like, oh yeah, like that makes more sense because if I wanted to make more money so I can just go spend more calories, it's the same thing. And it's usually these weird mindsets that help people so much more than you realize. Off, what I found in my own journey is I'll have like one random mindset that pops in like, oh yeah, yeah, like that's how that thing works. It's like a click of an insight. And that's the thing that stays in my mind. And breaks me through to the next level of my journey you might have had something like this as well where like you almost have like a season like two months or a month or a week or whatever of like you obsessing over this one insight and that's what takes you to the next level like someone told you yeah cardio is so important because of x and you're like oh yeah for like a month straight you're like yeah, yeah cardio is important because of x this is how important like this kind of mindset knowledge and, and these insights are along with that it's like spending money on things with higher roi that's what we tell people who have got like poor finances and so that's that's the same as telling a fat guy like, oh yeah, eat cleaner. All calories are not the same and all purchases are not the same. If you eat cleaner, you'll be more full. You'll have healthier like insides and stuff and uh, you'll perform better. So the promise was that I'll teach you an interesting analogy that'll probably make it easier for you to stay in shape. We've covered that. We covered the analogy, how to use it yourself and then how to help others with it. We covered everything that I promised to you and the final gift, the top link in the description, my free email list where you can go and get emails like this every single day. They're very detailed, by the way. This is cut off there, but it was like a thousand word email that you could probably read in like five, ten minutes or something whilst you're like drinking a cup of coffee every morning. So if you're an intellectual guy, you like education and you enjoy reading, you'll love this. Go click on the top link in the description right now and do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.